I just want to just share this word of God with you um, found in 1 Corinthians 13. Uh, wherever you are, can you just lean off your pillow for a minute, put your coffee down, um, um, your, your, your McDonald's breakfast down for a moment and just, uh, just share with us in your living room, bedroom, kitchen, wherever you are. Maybe you're sitting on your deck enjoying uh, the, the, the sun rays, wherever you are. We do have a few leaders today present with us because we wanted them to see what's been happening behind the scene. We have not opened to phase one yet. Um, I just wanted to, some key leaders to see um, how the volunteers, the staff, how they've been uh, really functioning week after week, sacrificing, uh, and really making things better. And so let's share together again in these moments. I, I do solicit your prayers this morning. Um, 1 Corinthians 13, it's called the love chapter. I, I, I preached this sermon last year, um, but the Lord led me back to it uh, because of the season in which we find ourselves. So let's, let's start with verse 8, reading from um, the Passion Translation, and here it goes. It says, love never stops the loving. Love never stops the loving. It extends beyond the gift of prophecy, which eventually fades away. It is more enduring than tongues, which will one day fall silent. Love remains long after words of knowledge are forgotten. Our present knowledge and our prophecies are but partial. But when love's perfection arrives, the partial will fade away. When I was a child, I spoke about childish matters, for I saw things like a child and reason like a child. But the day came when I matured, and I set aside my childish ways. For now we see but a faint reflection of riddles and mysteries, as though, as though reflected in a mirror. But one day we will see face to face my understanding is incomplete now, but one day I will understand everything just as everything about me has been fully understood. Until then, say until then. Until then, then there are three things that remain. Until then, until then, there are three things that remain. Faith, hope, and love. Yet love surpasses them all. Amen. You may be seated. Lean back on your pillows. Pick up your coffee mugs again. Relax with your bagel. I want to just share for a brief moment today um, because I believe the church is at a crossroads. Not only our nation, but the church. The church is at a crossroads because we have failed to live our Christian lives with the element that the Apostle Paul describes here in 1 Corinthians, which is love. The church and its identity crisis. We have even divided ourselves among denominations, and we have highlighted that one is usually better than the other. We have taken rituals and traditions and highlighted them more than we have taken the words of hope, faith, and love and used them to unify us even when we have split with various denominations. We have the evangelicals, the Pentecostals, the high church, low church. We have those who declare they have no denomination, but you do. Once you start to look like others, then you build your own denomination, even without titles. But you don't have to live within the refines or confines of denom denominations or traditions. I want to share with you as you pray with me through this sermon today, because the Apostle Paul 
metaphorically uses language to help us understand that while we lift all of the gifts of the Spirit, while we raise and talk about how anointed we are, the Apostle Paul says the greatest of all these things that we brag about is love. He says prophecy will cease, words of revelation. He says to us that words of knowledge, tongues, laying on of hands, the gift of interpretation. Well, all of these gifts are wonderful, the gifts of administration, the gifts of hospitality. Well, all of these things are wonderful, all these things are good. The church has failed in the one component of expressing to the world what love looks like. We have proselytized the gospel and made it cheap. We have sold the cross as an image to be worn and not understood how to live it. We have talked about prosperity and that struggle because we, we love Friday in the essence that we call it Good Friday, but we love resurrection. We rush from Friday to Sunday. Well, what do I mean by that? We, we don't like being uncomfortable. The church has gotten to a place where we want to just overlook the hardships and the struggles of Jesus on Friday because we expect resurrection. I've been saying for the last several weeks that we can't rush to resurrection because Jesus Christ stayed dead for three days. We can't rush to resurrection until we are able to understand how it feels to die and be buried, and then rise again. Uh, the, church, the church has held people hostage. We've made some feel that some of us are superior, that others is no more than supremacy. The church looks like the world because we have a hierarchy that some of us are more anointed and more better than the rest of you all. And the church itself has failed to really understand because we want to clap on Sunday speak in tongues on Sunday, but not deal with realities of the poor on Monday. I submit to you that real love is not superficial. The real love makes you not blind, but open your eyes to the realities that others are facing. I know that many of you are getting tired of this social and civil, civic unrest and racial disharmony across our nation. You're tired of protesting. But I suggest to you, it's not time to get tired of protesting. It's it's time to get tired of living in the same old, same old. I'm trying to ask you to pray with us because while so many of us want to talk about the songs we sing and the artists that we bring to our churches, but yet we don't have an attitude of real love toward one another, even if they differ than how we feel about the gospel. I want you to pray with us because, because there, there are many things that we just got to push through today. There are two theological terms that I've used repeatedly in the past. These two theological terms are familiar to some of you. It is based upon our spiritual relationship with God and how we view God's word. One word is exegete. The word exegete is a critical analysis or interpretation of the biblical text, the exegete. To exegete is to pull out according to God's spirit what the word or spirit is saying to us. I declare that many of us need to start to do proper exegetical work because the Holy Spirit speaks to you from the text. Rather than exegete the text, you put in the text based upon your prejudices, your biases, your discrimination, or your attitudes about what you think the world should look like. Thus, you make or water the text down because the text cannot live in its authenticity when you insert how you feel about it. I'm sorry, y'all, can y'all just pray with me? Can y'all just pray with me? Because now we get to understand the Word of God, if we are to live in the true essence of love, we must 
we must abstract it. We must extract it from the Spirit of God speaking to us about how to handle life. Not insert how we feel based upon our personal preferences or biases. We must speak truth. But what is truth? I want to share today because love is not some emotional feeling. Love is a spiritual discipline. It is an act of decision. Love involves faith. It involves hope. And it involves an active part on your will. You have to understand that what makes us look like Christ is not the crosses or the collars or the church buildings or the ecclesiastical garments you wear or the prefix or the suffixes behind your name. What makes us look more like Christ is not quoting scripture without attaching yourself to the rest of the body. What makes you look as a Christian, it is not saying you're the lead pastor, senior pastor, executive minister, or administrator of any church. What makes you look like Christ, according to the word of God, John 13, 35, it says your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Now, the essence of love must be seen, not not in its superficial stance of, I love you because you do what I want you to do, or I love you because we both agree on how we're going to approach the situation. No, real love is looking at the individual saying, we don't have anything in common but God. And for me, that's enough for me to try to understand and not allow systematic oppression to attach itself to any race or to any gender or to any class of people. I submit to you that it's not time to be comfortable, but it's time to stay uncomfortable. I submit to you right now that love must be the order of the day, but love isn't just singing kumbaya and holding hands with whites and blacks and Hispanics and reds. And browns, no, that's not love. You can have hold hands and still in your heart have a sense of jealousy, hatred, and malicious thought because that person does not acclimate themselves to what you think they ought to do. When God frees us, he frees us to be. And when you understand that you are an express image of God, I am an express image of God, that means that we can't put God in a box. God is too great. God is too big to be put in a box. That means that different expressions of love must be based upon one level of love. And that's God, that's agape love, that's that's us understanding that I can't just worship with you or come to church with you, but you never try to understand the woes of my reality. How can you say you love me when you don't even try to understand the plight? How can you say you love me and not walk with me when I am going through a challenging moment of my life? I, I'm sorry, y'all, y'all I, I got to just walk through this text because the word lets us know uh, that, that we who are God's children, we who have been born again, we who have been raised from the ashes of this life must, 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 must hold each other accountable for love. I don't mean just kissing up to me. I don't mean just again hugging me. No, that, that, that's cool. Hug me. Hold my hand. Not now. Not, not until corona, coronavirus is over. We'll get to that point of hugging and shaking hands again. But I, I, I mean there's something deeper. The love that God has in his son Jesus Christ calls Christ to put his life on the line. Christ didn't just die for himself. He didn't die just for what he believed in. He died because he wanted us to believe that his death could bring reconciliation. I want you to hear me because we don't just want to clap on Sunday morning and and have different races in our pews and our chairs, but we never understand what they're going through. We don't want to hear. All we want to do is worship and praise God. But I submit to you that's not enough when love is in place. I'm almost there, y'all pray with me. And what if God lets us know that divine, mature, healthy love will cause you to forfeit your preference? 
in order to connect with the body. How can you say you love Christ the head and then not love the body he died for? I may not be the heart. I may be the little finger. I may not be the arm. I might just be the big toe. But please don't, don't oppress me. Please don't negate my existence because I'm not a male or a female. Whether you're a male or female, we both are made in the image of God. We're going to deal with the realities of life. That life is not always fair. But love seeks resolution. Love seeks a moment where we're able to come from this, fun this functionality to walking in God's faith and love. Uh, uh, I'm, 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 I'm trying to get that. Y'all pray for me. Unfortunately, we, we are so often separated. But I, I want to I just move on because many, 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 many people go to church, many of us watching church, but the church, the church, the church has received your tithe. We took your offerings, but, but, but we haven't fought with you and walk with you when you were going through your critical moments. We, we want to keep our lights on and we want to keep involved in community, but we must do more than just take your tithe. We must do more than just take your offerings. We got to engage ourselves in what you are hurting from. Y'all, y'all help me. I told y'all this is a, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get there. I can give me two more Mariner minutes. Not, give me two more Mariner minutes. Let, let, let the word of God talks to us today about love. He says you got faith, you got, you got love, you, you, got, you got hope, but he said faith, hope, love, faith, hope, love. Faith, 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 faith. You can't have faith without hope. And hope needs something called love. See, because of my love, I can hope. Because of my hope, I need faith. Either way, I got faith because of my hope. I got hope because of divine love. Okay, y'all got it. Y'all missed that. I got faith because I got hope. I got a hope because I got God's love on my side. And his word says that if God before you are more than anything against you, that's sickness, that's COVID-19, COVID that's, 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 that, that's racism, whatever you want to call it, that's cancer, diabetes, the Lord said, if I'm for you, I will give you the ability to push and fight beyond your sickness. Uh, let me just close out. I, I, I told y'all that didn't... Uh, the commandment to love is not the same as the preference to like. <laughs> uh, no, no, y'all just missed it. Y'all should, a thumbs up right there, hearts going out. No, the commandment to love is not the same as the preference to like. And it's a shame that the church has dealt more with liking versus loving. I don't have to walk in your shoes to try to understand where you've been walking. And so we find ourselves, church, this place of how do we live our lives as Christians. Well, let me just simply say this, because we've got to get away from the sentimental love. You know what sentimental love is? Sentimental love is cheap. It is conditional. It is based on preference and feelings. Sentimental love is based upon that you and I, today, we okay, we got something in common. But that's, that's not what God wants. God's, God, God's word is love. That's why I can't allow people to push me so low as to make me hate them. I, I, I can't. I, I, I hate the actions, but I can't say I hate people. I mean, Donald Trump is pushing me, but I don't hate him. It's tough some days. Not because of his politics, it's because of his immoral stance. Listen, y'all, listen, church. If, if you voted for him, then praise the Lord. That's okay, whatever. What, I, I don't care. It doesn't matter. If, if you vote, that's good. But how can we tolerate a person who, who can't tolerate people who are different? He has mocked everybody who's been different. How can the church continue to say we support him 
because he's against abortion. Listen, the black church has to deal with so many issues. All of us aren't for abortion. We are for women's rights to choose, but all of us don't like abortion. So why, why? But we got other issues that we must address. Social unrest, racism, so we had to pick one. While you pick abortion, we pick equality. While you pick abortion, we had to pick justice, fairness. Why can't we combine the two and say, everybody who's hurting matters? Why make us choose between an elephant and a donkey? Am I messed up? Shelly, I got to... Let me close this thing out. Let me close, let me close this thing. What, what's, what's going on? The church must stand not for politics. I remember a time decades ago and biblically where politicians would come to the church to get leadership. Now they come to get a vote. We better prioritize, reprioritize how we handle politicians coming and sucking the blood out of our congregation and not holding them accountable. You can change and pull down statues, but until stat- statues, but until the statues change, until legislation change, you can take down the Confederate monuments, good, take them down, put them in storage. But until you are able to change the consciousness of America and all the rules and regulations that have been put in place that cause others to be oppressed. We are never doing anything but have sentimental love. <laughs> Bible wants us to love each other. But loving each other doesn't mean agreeing with you. When we feel that we don't have an equal right at the table. I'm so grateful because I'm so thankful because of David, King David, who says, is there anybody in my friend's Jonathan's house that I can bless? See, David and Jonathan have a covenant that whoever dies or lives will take care of the family members. And when Jonathan died on the battlefield, then David becomes king and asks the question, is there anybody in Jonathan's house that I can bless? And they said, there's one, there's one. He's Jonathan's son. His name is Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth was crippled because when the nurse picked him up, the nurse dropped him. He, he was crippled by those who carried him. Not by his own will, not by his own desire, but somebody who picked him up, dropped him, and now he's crippled, but yet we blame him. David said, can I bless anybody? And they, began, they brought Mephibosheth, and David told Mephibosheth, as long as I live, you are welcome to my dinner table. Whatever I have, you have. And we want to call it socialism. Call it whatever you want to call it. But when you're in covenant of love, you understand that I got to take care of those who were carried and dropped. And they find themselves in a difficult situation of how to live life. How to live life crippled. How to live life behind. How to live life playing catch up. Listen, I close with Romans 12 and I'm, I'm through, I'm through. I, I, it's love. The Bible says in Romans 12, it says, celebrate with those who celebrate and weep with those who grieve. Live happily together in a spirit of harmony and be mindful of another's worth Man, y'all got to get this. And be mindful of another's worth as you are your own. Okay, okay, now can I go back and read that again? I must have, celebrate with those who celebrate. Weep with those who grieve. Live happily together in a spirit of harmony. And be mindful of another's worth as you are your own. Don't live with a lofty mindset thinking you are too important to serve others, but be willing to do many your tasks and identity and and identify with those who are humble-minded. Don't be smug or even think for a moment that you know it all. So I confess right now, I have 
no clue of what to do next, but stand and trust God and speak truth to power. This is a time the church must decide. Are we just going to praise and sing Kumbaya or are we going to deal with realities that have been plaguing our country for centuries? Church, we are, we are the instrument God has chosen to change the world. And we can't change it when we hide behind the cross and we allow injustices, inequalities to continue. And yet we do nothing about it but sing a praise song, a hymn, and then go home. Do you care where some are going home to? Do you care that there are some people who are still hungry in America, in America, in America, where we just, trillions of dollars have now been freed up? Where has this money been? When people in our streets have been hungry and they didn't have an adequate health care, where, 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 where has all this money now come from? Trillions of dollars now going to corporations. Where did all the money come from? When people are walking the streets, when, when those who serve our country, who have PTSD, and they can't get help, but they served our country, but they walking with signs on our street corners, help me, I'm a homeless vet. Why are they homeless? Why don't we care about them psychologically? To build new facilities that minister therapeutically to their minds. Oh, but you will put that flag on your truck and you'll wave the American flag and patriotism. I wonder, do you even know what the stripes mean on the flag? I wonder, do you even know what the red means, the white means, or the blue means on that flag? I guarantee you, some of you don't even have a clue of what those symbols mean. Listen. My agape love will not allow me to hate or hurt you. But my love and God will make you or make me hold you more accountable to the kingdom you say you love. I'm through peace, love, and power. Y'all were very patient with me today. You're very kind with me today. Well over my time. But guess what? I'm learning that we can get in and get out in an hour and 15 minutes. That is amazing. <laughs> We're going to keep that thing going. But listen, um, I, I want you to take my words as, as words of love. Let's show the world what love is really about. If you're a Christian, you don't have to walk in my shoes to empathize or sympathize with my plight. Nor should I negate where you have been. But we can't just be comfortable. I love you. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior, Christianity is not a weak religion. It's not passive. It's strong. Some have isogeed the text and they made it weak. But Christianity is not weak. Nor is Christianity a white man's religion. No, it's not. <laughs> Christianity is liberating. It is fulfilling to let us know that this man died for our sins. It is a religion based upon a relationship. So do you mind me asking you right now, I know you're watching, but do you have a personal relationship with Jesus? Not with me, not with your ministry leader, but with Jesus. Do you have a personal covenant with God that will help you go through anything? You might cry through it, but you'll still go through it. Maybe you want to be a part of our family, virtual family. You may never sit foot in our building. You may never come to any ministry meetings. 
but maybe you want to be a part of our virtual family. It's easy. Get your text phone. Get your phone out now. Go to your text messages. Hit 313131 and put in L-I-V-E-G-C. It should be on your screen. But listen, I've taken enough of your time. I want you to enjoy your day. I want you to relax, but don't get too comfortable because this is not a season of comfort. It's a season of challenge. Take care. Peace, love, and power. I love you. Thank you for joining us for today's message. If God is impacting your life through this ministry, join us in reaching others all over the world by investing today. You can give at grovechurchva.com giving. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more messages like this one.